Here comes the storm What's up you guys, it's D Machine here and I'm bringing you a quick tips and tricks video today. I'm just going to talk to you guys about uh, some things that I've learned in Arena that aren't necessarily common knowledge. Um, as weird as that is, uh, people don't share this stuff very often and I don't know why. But uh, after watching some streams, uh, talking to other high rated players, and just knowing about other classes, uh, I picked up some things that are really useful against certain compositions as a rep paladin, and I'm just going to jump right into it. So the very first thing that I want to stress, especially with how powerful shamans are right now, is how important it is to kill their totems. Healing stream totem, I shit you not, does 50% of their healing throughout a game. If a, common, if a shaman is dropping that totem efficiently, that totem will literally keep someone like his teammate up through an entire CC. Like. If you watch Sea-Do stream, like the best shaman in the world in my opinion, um, he won't trinket a CC because there's Riptide and a healing stream totem down and he's going to sit a 7 second CC with like his mage at half health because his healing stream totem's down. That sort of thing, like if you kill that stream totem before you put a shaman into a CC, you'll probably get a lot more defensive cooldowns faster. Not only that, but Capacitor, capacitor Totem, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but it's a it's a totem that AoE stuns around the totem, but uh, the Capacitor Tater Totem could be easily killed, and uh, yeah, so kill the Capacitor Totem, kill the Healing Tide Totem, kill the Mana Tide Totem, because if they're running low on mana, or the, if you keep their, their mana like uh, not necessarily the most efficient, they have to pick and choose when they heal and stuff like that. So when a Shaman's mana is going down, you're ultimately winning the fight, right? Um, what else is there? Grounding totems. Make sure that you're killing those grounding totems before um, you're trying to put them in like a trap or something like that, or you're about to hodge. Make sure they kill the grounding totem. And Gladiator, or not Gladiator, Gladius uh, shows an icon of a grounding totem above their fate or above their class icon, so you know when the grounding totem's down, so you can make sure to try to find it and kill it. And certain things like Holy Prism and stuff like that, or even a Hunter's Pet Growl will get rid of the grounding totem without even targeting it. So also, if you go under nameplates inside just the Blizzard unit frame, inside the Blizzard unit frames, you can go to to uh, names that you uh, that you see, like the health bars that you see. You can choose totems as a health bar to see, so they're even easier to spot. So and not only that, but you should probably start killing some warlock pets. Now there's an ability called Soul Link that um, basically reduces the amount of damage taken by the warlock when they have a pet out. If you kill that pet, they're a lot squishier than if they were to sacrifice the pet. Um, so try kill, and not only that, but they have a silence. The Warlock's pet has a silence, so if you kill the Warlock's pet, they basically lose a silence that they can use while in CC. But you do have to kill the pet twice, essentially. But if you see an option to kill a Warlock's pet, you will gain a head by killing it. Not only Warlock's pet, but Mage's pet. If you kill a Mage pet, and they're even easier to kill than a Warlock's pet, they actually have a lot less finger of frost procs. Every time that they get their people in Nova, in the Frost Nova that the pet has to offer, they get fingers of frost procs that makes it so their ice lances hit a lot harder and they automatically crit. So, and not only that, but um, they just lose a lot of damage and control. So, and the pet is really easy to kill. And you can kick them in frost to be able to, it's a fairly long cast time. And if they're trying to cast it and you're like a rep paladin with a hunter, if you kick them in that cast, they can't block. So, just something to take into consideration, like when uh, they're across the map and they're just playing really defensive, take advantage of those times and kill a pet. It helps out dramatically. Not only pets, if they don't have a mage or a warlock on their team and you want to make your time efficient when they're playing really defensive, kill a light well. A light well is basically like a second wind for everyone. It heals uh, people when they're below 30% health. Kill that light well, man, and then like getting someone under 30% health and it will be a lot easier to land a kill. Now, on top of all of that, there's also something that people don't necessarily know too much about, and it's because they're still fairly new, and it's Windwalker Monk cooldowns. They don't really have, like, a one-shot Swifty button macro that they can just run in and jump and press. They have a brew that stacks up that increases their damage, and they usually wait until about 8 to 10 stacks before pressing the button, and you need to understand what that icon looks like. You need to understand when they're using it, because that's their, that's their Swifty. 
but uh, it takes a bit of momentum for them to get there. But understanding when they're about to use that damage, you could use your defensive cooldowns efficiently before you go into a leg sweep. So you won't they won't get you to bubble anything. If you melee wall preemptively before, like a silence into a leg sweep, you'll be way better off than if you, say, just figured out that you're going to take a lot of damage while taking a lot of damage. Um, if you spot these cooldowns before they happen and use defensive cooldowns that aren't as big as bubble or health swap or something like it you'll be trading efficiently and you'll be better off in the long run of the game and last but not least is switch switching targets now a lot of people like to sit on one target all game they don't think about going to a different target they're like yeah we kill mages so let's just train a mage into the ground and honestly that probably would work 90 percent of the time if you're running ret hunter shaman but uh if you're facing like a different team that you're struggling with learn to switch uh against rester druids in particular i love switching just looking at them and putting them into a hodge just about 80 percent of the time i get a bark skin without even touching them. just putting them into a hodge and looking at them um but not all rest of druids are that silly or stupid rather um but if you switch targets there's a lot of passive buffs and things like that on a target that we haven't that you haven't been hitting um, for an example, rest of druids are the best example uh, because they're hots, right? They have a stack of hots on that target that you've been hitting the whole time. If you switch to say, like, if you're facing a KFC with a druid, even though that's not a very good comp, if you switch to the hunter and the warrior has full hots, um, that hunter's probably going to get a deterrence out of them. Like, yeah. Uh, especially, like, so I love to switch in 2v2 arenas when I'm facing, like, a, a rest of druid warrior. Um, the warrior pops die by the sword we hit the druid we get bark skin go back to the warrior druid puts iron bark on him go back to the druid the druid now doesn't have bark skin or iron bark to give to himself that druid's gonna be boned if he doesn't have a trinket so i mean learn to switch more often and you'll probably get more defensive cooldowns more efficient trades for defensive cooldowns the further ahead you get and ultimately a win will come out of it if you trade efficiently if you have like a swifty macro for your defensive cooldowns you're not doing it right you want to trade defensive cooldowns efficiently you want to kind of be like really greedy is the term that the professionals use is they say oh this guy's being really greedy because he didn't ice block at three percent health he's got balls of steel you know what i mean that's being really greedy but if he gets away with uh not ice blocking at three percent health because they just popped all their offensive cooldowns that guy's ahead and he's ahead in the game so I hope these tricks help you out guys, and I hope that you guys are pushing rating even though Rep Paladins aren't so hot this season, and even if you're not a Rep Paladin, I hope these tricks help you out. The machine out, blast off. If you guys could uh, just follow me at Twitter if you found this helpful at all, or if you just are entertained by any of my videos and just want to get updates on me, uh, follow my Twitter at DMachineWow. That's where I'm going to let you know when I go live, when I live stream, where I let you know when a new movie comes out, because YouTube subscribing uh, isn't too efficient on that. And even if you just want to ask me a question, I will be able to answer that the best at my Twitter. So DMachineWow is my Twitter. Thanks for watching, guys.